On Monday, Paul Hodgkins was sentenced for his actions on January 6th at our nation's capital. He was one of thousands at the Capitol that day and was targeted by the FBI and Democrats as part of their mission to address the quote-unquote insurrection, as they like to call it. But what's different in his situation from many others going on around our country right now? Well, it's all about the politics. This is the Closet Conservative Podcast. As I said in the opening, Paul Hodgkins was sentenced on Monday to eight months in prison for his actions on January 6th. The prosecutors were asking for as much as 18 months for the felony charges that Hodgkins was facing. He pled guilty to those charges in June of obstructing an official proceeding. So what exactly did Hodgkins do? Well, he entered the U.S. Capitol wearing a Trump shirt, waving a Trump flag, and he stood there. Now, of course, it happened while the Congre- or while Congress was in joint session to certify the results of the election, but he engaged in no violent acts. He did nothing but walk into the building with his Trump gear. That should certainly send a warning to everyone else that was in D.C. for the January 6th event. For simply being there, you could be charged as part of this insurrection, as the Democrats have preferred to call it. Now, I know that there are some that engaged in acts that are truly crimes on the 6th. I'm not arguing that point. There are those who attacked law enforcement. They uh, had officers that were injured. Even Ashley Babbitt lost her life that day. But, of course, no one's wanting to talk about that. But just as much as I expect charges from those actions on January the 6th, I would expect charges from other events happening around the country as well. And I'm talking about the various Antifa riots and the Black Lives Matter protests that are taking place. Just as property was damaged and law enforcement were injured in Washington, D.C., the same has been happening around the country in their events as well. People have lost their lives, their livelihoods. There's been many things happening. Many more than just one life has been lost amid all of their chaos. Many people have been beaten or killed as part of the violent uprisings across the country. But rather than handing out sentences for these cases, these are being dismissed one by one. Judges are simply letting these people go without any punishment. They are letting these people go without facing any charges, any crimes, any time. These are people that are arguing to end our nation and our freedom. They have called for the end of our nation to overthrow our government and to eliminate the freedoms that we all have each day. That is truly an insurrection. It's engaging in terrorism that many are dealing with as part of their lives. But our president says that they are simply an idea. They're not a threat. Our vice president is happy to support their bail fund and march with them as she can in the streets under the disguise of social justice reform. So what's the difference? After all, both Black Lives Matter and Antifa have initiated violence and destruction anywhere they seem to go. But there's a celebration of their actions rather than a prison sentence. Well, it's all about the politics, of course. It's all about which side of the spectrum these groups are on. You see, Black Lives Matter and Antifa, they share the same initiatives and goals as the Democrats. They seek to destroy our nation. They want to overthrow freedom, and instead of establishing or or maintaining freedom, they want to establish communism or socialism, as they call it. They are not fighting for change in regards to equality and racism, as they want to claim, They're fighting for change to our nation and what it means to be an American. The question becomes, at what point will the Democrats end their calls for action against those who want to stand for freedom? We already know that they want to see former President Trump in jail, especially as he continues to press on the election fraud cases and information that's coming out. They have argued for registries for anyone who was a Trump supporter so they can monitor your actions and determine if you are a threat to society. All the while, they allow these other groups to attack and destroy our nation. They know that they can get away with it. So there's little that they will do to stop now. There's little standing in their way to approaching any conservative out there and placing them in jail. You wearing Trump gear still? Well, you better take into account you may be able to be charged just for that. 
Don't you dare call for protecting freedom or standing for constitutional rights that are guaranteed to you as an American. Don't talk about that sacred document, the Constitution. Don't talk about this nation being a constitutional republic. Those may be worth several years in prison. I know I've said it before, but being a conservative is becoming dangerous in our country. And at some point, there is a point of no return. So we have to ask ourselves, are we at that point? Can we continue on? Can we save our nation from the destruction attempts of the left? Or perhaps we're at a point we need to go back and remember some words that were written around 200 years ago. These words were, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them to, with, one, with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. Now, pay attention right here. These are the words. Deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. In other words, our very declaration shares that the government derives its power from the consent of the governed and that those governed have the right to alter or abolish their government when it becomes destructive to the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Democrats, their actions, are going against the very foundations of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I've talked about how they are out here consistently destroying life, going after and supporting abortion. They're going after liberty and the freedoms that we enjoy every day, and they're destroying the ability for someone to pursue happiness because they believe they can legislate it, rather than you go out and you earn it through the American dream. Key words from our founding fathers. Key words that at a time in our country... We have to remember, this is not about becoming or being American anymore. This, to the radical left, it's all about politics. The Closet Conservative Podcast is a production of The Liberty Loft. Copyright The Liberty Loft 2021. You can find more shows and information on our website, www.thelibertyloft.com, or on any of our social media channels. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, leave a five-star review, and share the podcast with your friends.